So today we're taking this slab that had a few holes in it and we're filling that with metal that extends all the way through to make a sculptural base. A friend of mine gave me this slab. I'm not sure what kind of wood it is, but the circumference is pretty dramatic and it has holes that go all the way through. I used a chisel to remove the excess bark so they could clearly see where I wanted the legs to go through. I'm going to use the tin and bismuth alloy that I've been experimenting with to fill in the holes, but I want a stronger structure inside of that. So I just welded some quarter inch steel rod together to make the scaffolding for the sculptural legs. Quarter inch rod is great for this because it's thin enough to easily bend, but when you weld a few pieces together, it's quite strong. I cut some short pieces of rod, and once I had the general structure of the legs in place, I started to tack weld on these smaller pieces so that they'd really spread out and fill in the holes. I'm using scrap steel, and the tin and bismuth alloy isn't that cheap, so I wanna use as much steel as possible to reduce the amount of tin and bismuth that I need. For the base, I just cut out an organic shape out of some scrap plate steel. I trimmed the trunk, welded on the base, and then just kept adding in more supports to give it a sort of bonsai tree organic silhouette. Now I'm gonna need to make some molds so that I can pour the tin around the steel. And so I wanted to test out potter's clay to see if that would work well for some quick and cheap molds. So I tested it on the first pour to fill in the holes in the slab. I rolled it out with a bottle and then sealed up the holes with slabs. And I also made these little volcano profiles around the hole so I could kind of fill it up past the edge of the wood. I've now found a few places to buy this tin and bismuth alloy and I'll link them in the description below. It melts at just about 280 degrees and when I poured it in, I quickly saw the mistake of using wet clay. So the moisture in the clay reacted with the hot metal and it created sort of a bubbling steaming effect which led to that metal being a little bit more porous and grainy where it came in contact with the clay. Now, that could be something that you actually like because it gives it a little bit more of a rough texture, but wasn't necessarily what I was going for. So the clay sort of worked, but had some unintended consequences in terms of texture. So for coating the top part of the legs, I flip the table upside down and use some additional clay that I'm going to let completely dry as filler in between the steel. I also started experimenting with tin foil to see if that would work well for mold making. And I tested that against some clay. The next pours went well, but it became clear that tin foil was the quick and easy way to create forms to cover up the steel. The tin foil gave the tin a faceted and angular surface, which actually could be quite cool, but not really what I'm going for for this project. It was also difficult to get the tin foil to have a consistent distance between it and the steel. So I ended up with the tin being kind of thin around the steel in some points and then way too thick in others. Now I don't want to waste this tin, so I used my reciprocating saw to cut off the excess parts so I could remelt those down and use it for coating the rest of the base. I put the base off to last because I wasn't really sure how I wanted to mold this up without using a ton of tin, but I did think it would be helpful to pour in from the bottom, so I just drilled a hole in it. What I do like about this process is that when you screw up and over pour or apply the tin too thick, you can just trim it down and remelt it and try again. If only wood had this level of reusability. So I poured through the hole and was able to coat the rest of the shaft. This project was also the first time I got to test out my Ryobi soldering iron. It works really well for melting down some of the facets into a more organic texture. And you can even kind of cut off some of the pieces of tin so that you can recycle them. But what was a really fast way to thin down the overly thick parts was a torch. And it kind of gave it a smooth tree bark like texture. And in thinning out the upper branches, the droplets dripping down started to coat the base. And it looked very much like a mossy kind of rough textured lower part of a tree trunk.
So I decided to go with this and just held some tin and some pliers and melted and dripped it all over the base. The angle grinder grinds down the tin quite quickly. So I took down just some of the high points, but didn't try to make everything smooth. I kind of want it to look like an old weathered tree where parts are sort of smooth, other parts are rough, but I didn't want to look too sort of shiny and consistent. I used tape and tin foil to seal up some of the bottom cavities on the slab and then did my final pour so that I could have a nice flush and level tabletop. Use my orbital sander with 80 grit paper to grind it down flush and my rotary tool was handy for sort of sculpting some of the metal edges. Did a little sanding in the nooks and crannies and one last pass with a soldering iron to blend out some of those facets that came from the tin foil. This wood was quite hard and sanding on the end grain is always kind of a pain, but I smoothed it out up to a 220 grit finish. This little belt sander came in handy for getting into some of the nooks around the branches. And once I had everything looking the way I wanted, I coated the whole thing with some Maker Brand Simple Finish. It's an oil and wax finish that works both on metal and wood. So perfect for this kind of sculpture slash furniture piece. I really like the idea of the metal going through the knot holes and creating the actual structural support for the table. I'm still kind of torn on the finished texture for the metal itself. I'm tempted to go in and sand it completely smooth, but the table is so sort of bumpy and organic and gnarly that I don't want the base to look too slick and synthetic in comparison. I'm also looking into a way to take down the shine of the metal a little bit to give it more of a dull gunmetal gray. So if you know any ideas, hit me up in the description box below. I want to give a quick shout out to Ryobi, the sponsor for this project, and they make all these different tools. Now, most of the time I'm just using drill, sander, and a circular saw. But this little belt sander, super handy for all sorts of projects. Use it on metal, use it on wood, gets into all those little nooks and crannies. The rotary tool, I like a lot. I really like not having the motor here that lets you get in with a lot more precise control. And this was my first time using the soldering iron. I definitely didn't use it for soldering electronics, but still worked well. All right, check out some of my other projects and thanks for watching. Bye.